It's Ben here, and here in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna have a look at how we work with layers in Final Cut Pro, some of the essentials that you'll need to know as you're working with layers. So first thing to have a look at is our footage up here. We've got a few different videos of the city and of some universities and educational situations. So we're gonna grab one of these videos, and the first video that you bring down to the timeline will normally drop right onto the main storyline here. So that is this darker gray bar that you have right in the middle of your edit here. So if we do shift and Z, it's going to zoom to fit that part of the timeline. Now the next video that we drag down, we just click and hold, we can see we can drag down the video above it, or we can drag that video below it. Now the way the layers work is that the topmost video will obscure the bottommost video. So basically our main storyline here is obscuring the video behind it. So if I drag that up, you'll see now we see the second video. Actually, they're two different size videos. So I'm actually going to change this top video so it fills the viewer here. So if you don't see your inspector across on the right, just go to Window, Show in Workspace, and make sure the inspector is checked. And I also have my inspector stretched out the full height of my screen here. So you can do that by double clicking at the top, it will extend the inspector there. It just helps us to see some more of these options. So if we come down to spatial conform, we can set that to fill. And so now you can see that's filling it. And obviously, because it's above the other clip, it is obscuring it. Now, if we want to reveal a bit of that lower clip, then we can use something like the transform options here to scale down our video. So I'm going to just zoom out from here a little bit. And you can see this is how you would create a split screen or have multiple videos within one screen is by layering them up in this way. So you can see now we have our two videos, one layered up over the other. So let's just undo that. So Command and Z will undo those options. So we're going to turn off our transform options here and then we're going to come and have a look at another couple of layer options. So if we come to our audio here, you can see when we drag audio down, wherever we drop it, it is going to drop below our video. So we still have, and I'm going to zoom out of the timeline here a little bit, our main storyline, which is this layer here. And then we have our audio layer below that. So normally when you're editing, you'll edit in Final Cut Pro specifically on the main storyline first and then add other clips above that. So if we come to our footage, I'm going to grab a few clips here. I'm just going to hold down shift to select a few of these. We'll drag these all down to the timeline and onto that main storyline. And you can see that's the main layer that we're working with. So one other feature of layers as well is that we can actually group layers together on another piece of our storyline. So if we take a few clips here, drag those down to the timeline, and I'm going to do Shift and Z again just to get everything to fit, then you can see these layers are kind of all independent layers on that second storyline. So as I drag them around, they're going to bump up and down um, all independently. So if, for instance, we wanted those to move together on that second layer, then essentially we can group those into a connected storyline. So if I select all of these clips, and then I'm going to come to Clip and Create Storyline, or Command and G. And that is going to group all those clips together. You can see now I've got this gray box around all those clips. And I've also got where there were gaps before, these placeholder slugs or gap clips that we can modify and edit. So if I want to move these clips so they're touching each other, then I would delete the gap clip here and here. And so now all of these clips are connected on this storyline. So I can move them all together or I can drag them out of that storyline. And you can see when I do that and drag a video out, the other three videos snap together. So we'll undo that. And the same will happen when we're using the selection tool and we are shortening or lengthening clips that we have, it will affect all the clips within that storyline that we have selected there, just as it does for the storyline on the main timeline. There's a couple of things to note when you're working with layers here. And the first one is that the layer is connected to that main storyline at the point where you see this line popping out from below that. So as I'm moving this, you can see the point at which it's connected to that main storyline is changing. So this means a couple of things. The first one is if we select here and press delete, because that connected storyline was connected at that particular clip that we deleted, it's actually going to delete that clip as well. So this can be somewhere where you can come a little bit unstuck. In order to get around that, if I want to delete this clip, then I can either click on that clip and press forward delete, which will delete the clip but still leave the, the gap there, or 
I can change where this clip is connected. So it's connected right at the beginning here. If I move ahead in time and hold down Option and Command and click here, it's gonna actually move that connection to where I had my playhead. So you can see if I bring my playhead here, select my Connect Storyline, hold down Option and Command, it's now connecting it to a different point in the timeline. We can just see it when we move that around. So if I delete that first clip again, because it's not connected at that point, it's gonna allow me to delete that. So a few things to note about layers there. If we create another layer, so for instance, say a title layer, we'll come up to our titles and generators, and we'll grab a basic build in and out title, and we're gonna grab this assembler title. So we'll drag this down to the timeline. I'm just gonna stretch it out a little bit so it assembles over a bit more time. And as I play this back, I'm just gonna disable the audio here by tapping V. And you can see now if we play this through, then as that type assembles, it's assembling over the top of this topmost layer, which is not showing the background layer. So again, we've got those layers stacked from top to bottom where the topmost layer is obscuring the layers below. So we have a few different types of layers there. We have our audio layer, we have our video layers, and we have our type layer on top. There's a few other ways in which we can blend these as well. So I'm just gonna set this to fit. So first thing is we can add some opacity to these different layers so they blend together. So if we come to our video options up here for this middle layer, this middle video layer, then we can modify the opacity which is gonna allow it to blend with that layer in the background. And actually you can see this video, it's not quite filling that there. So I'm gonna change that again to fill. So you can see the blend is happening from top to bottom where this topmost layer of the city is blending with the video of the people in the background. We can also use some other blend options as well. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll recognize some of these subtract or darken options where we're really blending in a specific way the foreground image with the background image. And you can get some nice effects when you do this. So we've got our lighten option, we've got our screen option, and other different options for kind of overlaying and modifying how these images interact with one another within these layers. And you'll notice I'm always adding this effect, the opacity or blend mode to the layer that is above the background layer. If we apply these options to the background layer, then really very little will happen, if nothing, because it's not really blending with anything that's below it. It's just the audio layer that's below it. So we have to think about how those layers are stacked up from top to bottom. So what this also means is we can do the same with our type as well. So we can actually blend in our type so it becomes a bit more subtle. Or if we come to our type options and we come to our face, we can change the color of our type. So let's just go for a nice pink. And then when we do something like this, we can then come to our video options and use that option to actually blend with the layer behind it and you'll get some different options when you do that and some will work well and some will work not so well. Um, you can see here when I'm using Stencil Alpha it's actually putting that video inside the type which is kind of a cool effect. So the video is borrowing the transparency from behind that. Okay and this is doing the reverse. This is actually silhouetting the alpha so basically making a silhouette of the type. So some different options for blending type and video with those layers. We can also do one other thing here just before we finish up this brief overview of how layers work. If we come to our solids, I'm gonna grab the custom solid, we'll drop it down here. So basically this at the moment is just a, a black layer. Obviously this is kind of useful if we wanna reveal or kind of have that background layer visible but not as visible, so the type kind of pops out a bit more we can just have a little bit of opacity on that background layer. See, that works quite nicely. Or we could change the color of this generator to be something different, and we'll get some different effects when we actually use either the opacity or we start to use these color effects. We'll start to get some different kind of looks and feels when we start to multiply or color burn or lighten the layer behind with some of those color effects. So you can see, you can start to get quite interesting in terms of how these different layers layer up. And obviously, you know, there's a lot going on just in these 
kind of quick experiments that we're doing here, but you can experiment yourself, think about how those layers are stacking up, and then also add more options in there to see what effects you can get within Final Cut Pro. One very last option that we'll just have a look at here, if we stretch this video out so it kind of fills our background there, is we have the option here to obviously use these different blend modes, which will be blending with both the images behind now. But what we can also do, I'm just going to disable this layer. I can also use the crop on this layer to crop from the top to blend it with the images below, crop from the bottom or from the right or left. So we can get some different kind of blended elements within there as well using the crop. Now the crop actually becomes quite useful. We'll just actually just add a bit of opacity to this image so we kind of get this stack of three images combined together. It kind of creates this nice layered effect. If we turn this back on, we can use the crop for the custom layer to good effect by cropping the bottom and the top within those layers to kind of letterbox that type. So we get the full effect of those layers, but we also get the, the type popping a bit more because we've added that colored layer behind the other layers. So a quick overview of how you can work with layers, experiment with layers in Final Cut Pro. If you do have any questions, then please do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next video.